Hello, today we will create an interesting effect of playing the animation while scrolling the web page. Something like what you see on the screen right now. Alright, let's start. First of all, I cleaned the scene a bit. I deleted all the buttons, all the extra materials because we will be using only one material. And also dummies for annotations. We won't need it in this project. Also, I've cleaned puzzle setup. The only things left are bloom and start and stop of rendering. Well, actually, let's turn it off as well because it will be in a way. Okay, we are ready. First of all, we need HTML elements. Set style for elements. We will be changing minimal height of the page. For the whole web page body. Let's change it to, let's say, 4000 pixels. Well, if I save it, we will not see any changes, because we also need a scroll bar for our page. For that, I will also change overflow Y parameter to scroll. Let's start the application. And on the right, you will see the scroll bar for this page. But if we scroll the mouse wheel now, the camera will also zoom in or zoom out. And also the camera will rotate if we click and drag on the screen. To fix it, we need to turn mouse controls off. In 3ds Max, we need to turn on Disable Controls checkmark in Camera Settings. And after that, Re-Export. Let's reload and instead of zoom out, we have page scrolling. Ok, back to puzzles. We can do the same using just puzzles. Let's go to camera slide and select set puzzle. Here we need to select allow zoom and set it to false. Just like that. Well, it is just another way and we already did it in Max, so we don't need it right now. Next, we need to set the position of our container, so it will always be on a screen in front of us and will not move away. Let's change it to fixed. Let's save and check. And yep, even though we scroll, the container is always in front of us. Ok, and now we need to track the scrolling. We need the puzzle on event and it will be looking at the scroll parameter. For elements window. We also need puzzle get probe. It will be checking how far the page was scrolled. For now, let's just output this parameter to the console. Let's open the console. And as you can see, when we are scrolling, the parameters are changing. The maximum value that this parameter can get is about 3330. And now all we need to do is to tie animation frames to the changes of this parameter. For that we need the puzzle set animation frame. Also the puzzle get animations off because we will be animating the whole group of objects. And here let's select the group with our animated objects, animated parts. To correctly tie together the parameter value and the animation frame, we need a special puzzle, map range. 
Also, let's create a variable which will be called current scroll, which will contain current scroll value. And now let's bring this puzzle here. Instead of print, we don't need prints anymore. Now, when scrolling, we will be changing this variable. And now, with the help of this variable, we will be able to control the animation. The variable range is 0 to 33, 30. And animation range is 0 to 50. And now animation starts playing by page scrolling. Alright, now let's make it more interesting. Let's make it boomerang. So the animation starts playing backwards when we reach half of the scroll range of the page. For that we need logical operator if. Let's place it here. We also will be tracking the value of the variable current scroll. If it will be less than 1665, or in other words, half of the scroll range. So the animation will play up until this scroll range. And the animation will play fully from 0 to 50. But if the scroll range is equal or more than 1665, the animation will play backwards from 50 to 0. Also, we need to set numerical values 1665 and 3330, the second half of scroll range. Let's see how it works. And here we go. The animation plays normally until the half of scrolling range. And then it plays backwards. And now all we need to do is to turn back on anti-aliasing and start and stop of rendering. Also we will need a new variable, scroll active. So when the scroll is active, this variable condition will be true. Ok, and now we have to check for the event when the scroll stops, but we don't have such puzzle, so we need to do it some other way. We will be checking each scroll event and then add the timer. So, let's place the timer here and call it scroll. We will be starting this timer once with an interval of 0.1 second. And here we will be setting scroll active to false. And at the start of scrolling, we will remove this timer. So, when the scrolling starts, the variable scroll active is set to true. The animation will play some frames. And after that, after 0.1 second, scroll active will become false. But if the scroll continues, the timer is removed. So the variable will not be set to false until the scrolling stops. Let's save. And now let's add tracking of this variable here. So if scroll active is true, then the rendering will start. If else, then the rendering will stop. Let's reload the page. And here we can notice that when the scrolling stops, the model becomes cleaner. 
Alright, that's all. Now we just need to add the text, which will appear when the page will be scrolling. And the page will be done. That's all. See you in the next tutorial.